Welcome back. It's been a few weeks, maybe months. Uh, apologies for not getting back to these tutorials, or if you can call them tutorials, um, sooner. I've just had a lot on my plate, uh, released an EP, went back to uni, various other things. Um, but I'm back, and I've got Falcon here, and we're gonna do some stuff. Um, I thought it might be fun today to explore some of the more sort of simple um, synthesis techniques, just generally, but in Falcon, um, and maybe play around with some of the macro uh, knobs, which you can find in this info pane over here when you actually add macros. Um, so <clears throat> I thought let's start with an analog stack oscillator cause you can get some pretty big sounds with it. <clears throat> and as you can see, it's basically one oscillator constructed out of eight separate oscillators and you can activate them. Um, so let's activate. Well, right now we just got a sine wave. Let's change that to a saw wave. And let's add another saw wave. And to make it extra special, why don't we... Hmm. Why don't we pan them? completely hard left and right and detune them slightly let's say that's too much seven or eight something like that um and that's cool and all but i think a cooler thing to do is to add another, a third one have it dead center, but this one, we are going to modulate the pitch slowly with an LFO, or as is often the case in these videos, I could go a smooth random, so you get just random fluctuations. Um, I think that that might be cooler in this case, because uh, I want it to sound a bit broken and less predictable. So let's drop the depth fairly low. I mean, already sounds pretty great. Very buzzy. Um, I do love a detuned saw wave. I mean, let's be honest, who doesn't? Um, so I pretty much like that. I, I often like to turn retrigger off because it and and I don't, I'm not really sure why <laughs> why there are these two options here because I kind of feel like they do the same thing but random start as well so that's cool and <clears throat> We're not done because we've got all these other oscillators and I don't think I've ever used all of them. Um, of course you can, but I think that these three saw waves is like a really good basis. And then you, anything else I add will be like little accoutrements. So like if I add say a sine wave, an octave lower, Alternatively, a triangle. Maybe two octaves. No, one octave. And sine wave, I think, is better. Let's try square wave. It's 
pretty good. I think sine wave is probably the best here. It's more subtle. And I think I'm gonna reduce the volume. Another fun trick is to add a saw wave, another one, change the semitones up, go up by a fifth, which, you know, obviously a fifth, everybody, um, sorry, that's a fifth. Everybody loves that, but we don't want like just a fifth sound but adding the harmonic uh, into the mix and putting it low. I don't know if that's working. <laughs> That's a nice idea though. Maybe we can try something else. Sounds significantly better when it's louder. I think the thing is, is because this would normally work um, if you had just like one oscillator and then you did a fifth and you did it really low and give it a little bit more, uh, I don't know, more harmonics. But because I've got three saw waves all operating in tandem, plus this sine wave, it's kind of being, if I lower the volume, it just sort of gets drowned out and becomes discordant. It's still a bit much. So, <clears throat> let's just abandon that idea and bring this back. Um, I mean, another pretty obvious thing to do in a situation like this, if we're building up this big, thick sound, is to add a square wave with pulse width modulation. So the thing here is that you've got this depth knob. I've sort of talked about this before in other videos um, for the LFOs and that does exactly what you think. Um, but you've also got this master send for the modulation and all modulation sources have this. Like if I go over the smooth random, it also has it, but it also has a depth knob and the amp envelope for the, uh, for the amp. It doesn't have a depth knob, but it's got it's got uh, the send amount. So in this case, to get like a perfect full range pulse width across these knobs, if it's on full and the depth is all the way up, it goes past the range. So you sort of get like a like if you look at the screen, it kind of like hangs at the edge of its range and then flips back. So we don't want that. So we're going to do this 0 0.5, which will do 50% of that. And now it does it perfectly. We do not want it to re-trigger though. I don't, I don't want it to re-trigger. I'm also going to slow it down a bit. So that's just adding a little bit of texture. Let's increase the volume because it's still down from where I lowered it before. Just shift this over. 
So I've got a limiter on here. I might just, there we go. It's distorting a little bit. Limiters there just to protect <laughs> my ears, the recording, etc. This is all cool. We're all enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. We can go further. And I'm gonna repeat what I did at the start with the saw waves hard panned, but this time I'm gonna do them less hard panned. I'll do like 36 on each side. And I might make, might detune them less or more. I haven't decided yet, let's try less. <laughs> And let's do minus five on each in the volume. So I, I think that just adds a bit more of like a silky quality to it. Like it smooths all of the hard edges out. Cause there's so many saw waves just beating against each other. And we've got this last, last oscillator over here, which let's bring it in. Let's make it a saw. Maybe let's try octaving up. Mm, I don't know if I like that. Let's go back to that. But of course I wanna do something different. So I might change the phase. And I am going to modulate it, but instead of with the smooth random, I'm just gonna do it with an LFO. And I'm gonna make it not re-trigger. And I'm gonna do the depth right down. <laughs> So that's all fun <laughs> and I like that. And you might ask why bother doing this when I can just do this. Let's just add another layer so we don't mess up our old layer. Let's mute this first layer and let's just go to the analog, bring that down and put the voices up to eight, do a stereo, do some detune, stereo hard spread. And that's cool too. You can do that. That's fine. It's way easier, <laughs> but you'll notice that you have significantly less control, of course, but also it just sounds pretty different. And, um, I like, sometimes it's nice to have that like severe degree of control, uh, over uh, eight oscillators and maybe these two together could sound good. Except for the fact that they are way too loud and they are uh, clipping, but we can, we can play with that. I'm just going to remove this for now. Um, so in this situation, I think we definitely need a filter. Um, and as I've discussed many times, there are just so many filters that are, are great here, but I'm going to go with an expander filter because it's often my go-to with Falcon because it kind of feels like it's the Falcon filter. Like all the other ones are sort of kind of like emulating something. Um, Expander is just this one filter. It's got an overdrive on it as well. It's got these sort of extra options. Um, got two times over sampling as well. And then on top of that, you've got all these shapes. So it feels like, like the UVI filter. Additionally, it feels that way because um, since Falcon released UVI, I have a product called Shade, which I think I've talked about before, which um, basically is like the ultimate filter plugin. Um, well, I say that there are lots of really great filter plugins, but it's very good. And you've got lots of modulation uh, options there. 
and it has the expander filter in it as well. So anyway, that's a digression that I don't need to go into. Here though, we have all of these options. Um, I like the idea of doing may maybe like an LP2 with that real gentle cutoff slope. And already it's very warm. I feel like this patch is already moving into like lush pad direction. <laughs> I just, I just can't help it a lot of the time. It's just what happens. However, um, maybe we'll, we'll try to keep the pad at bay and maybe do something a little bit more interesting. Maybe. Um, in the meantime, <clears throat> I'm going to modulate this filter cutoff with a uh, D A H D S R. So that sounds pretty cool. Um, I think what would make this patch really shine is if I alter the pitch. So I modulated the pitch. So like in a similar way. So if I do another one of these, do the, that like that, maybe like that. <laughs> If I change this to an attack decay, I think that's actually more appropriate. I wish, uh, hmm. Or an ADSR. Let's just do this one semitone. <laughs> So let's just try this one more time with this one. If I change the decay, bring down this. That's what I wanted. And then like this. That's cool. Um, I think just adjust the filter envelope amount. Oh, this limiter over here is, no pun intended, really cramping my style. Um, <laughs> let's fix that uh, by, let's add, well, firstly, in the program layer, let's just do something real simple to fix that. Let's just add a gain. 
just bring that down. And then over here, we can do some other things like we've got diode clipper, drive, exciter. What else? Analog crunch. Let's try a bit of diode. All right, we're not going to do a pad. We're going to do a nasty, gnarly sound. Do too many pads. They're so easy and they're so nice. What if though, we did more than just that? Let's try swapping them around. So if we're going to do like a gnarly sound like this, why don't we make it monophonic? Let's do re-trigger. And we could also make it unison. Let's try that. Whoa. Maybe that's too much. <laughs> Pretty, pretty good. However, um, we can do better. And I think the way we are going to do better, maybe, so the res filter is kind of like 303 filter. Let's just give it a, a quick listen. That's pretty much what I want. So let's modulate it with, 
Where am I looking? Here we go. LFO. And random. So sample and hold. And uh, leave retrigger on this time. So that every time you hit it, it gives you a different. Um, actually, let's slow the frequency right down so that it doesn't change. You could even turn smooth all the way up. We turn the resonance up. I think it would be interesting to just do that again, but with a different filter and modulate it with the, with a different LFO actually doing the same thing. Let's turn smooth all the way up again. <clears throat> uh, leave retrigger on. Um, uh, maybe this time I will do bipolar. Actually, just remove this expander filter because I feel like the sound has progressed and moved on to something that doesn't need that at the start. It's now like a rhythmic sound. <laughs> So I'm just going to get rid of it. And before I do though, I'll get rid of uh, the modulator as well, just to clean things up. So I like that. I like that effect. I mean, it's like a, it's a pretty classic kind of effect. But I think that what's going to make it cool here is how, like, we play with that. Like, what um, sequencing, basically, are we going to do here? Um, and we have a lot of options. Um, I think I've gone over a lot of these before. I don't want to go too deep into them. Maybe we'll just do something kind of simple this time. Like, let's do this one. Thank <laughs> you. 
Pretty cool. So, like, I really rarely use these kind of sequences, um, sequencers, uh, when I'm, like, programming sounds. Because I always, you know, I always use these sounds in a door. And in the door, I have <laughs> a whole world of sequencing available to me. Um, and so, it's often uh, limiting uh, especially if you're kind of putting like a proper melody in here, you know, that's why like arpeggiators are often more appropriate when I'm just creating sounds because I feel like it gives me more flexibility when I'm come to then use the sound. However, often I am making a sound in a production, like while I'm writing the track. And so... In that case, this would be perfect because like, say, you know, I've got a track in C, C minor. I just fuck around here for a bit and I've got like an instant sequence. I mean, it might not be very good, <laughs> but it is a sequence. That's cool. Um, I think we need some more filtering. I know that sounds a bit wild at this stage, but why don't we bring another expander back in, but this time we're just gonna use it differently. Like this could be our master filter. I also think that maybe making this portamento might be good. I did nothing. Go. All right, so pretty cool sound. Um, I think now would be a good time to do some macros. So I'm just gonna add a macro on this cutoff knob. I'm just gonna call it unsurprisingly filter cut off if I can type apologies for my very clickety clackety keyboard um, so we have our value here which as you can see controls the filter but you'll also notice that that filter knob shows up here um, so we're also going to do that though with the glide time And if we go back, we have our glide amount. So cool. Um, what am I doing? Wrong key. So that's great. However, um, the cool thing about <laughs> the cool thing about macros is how you can sort of assign many things to one knob. So let's take this even further. Um, that's not the filter I wanted. Let's get rid of that real quick. We've got our expander there. Let's add a biquad filter. And let's also assign that to the same macro, our filter cutoff. And while we're at it, let's go back to this and let's add a new macro for the resonance. And we'll naturally call it resonance. 
and we'll go to our by quad and we'll also assign that to the same macro. So now we have like a series of filters. <laughs> Cool, huh? <clears throat> Very cool. We can take this further. Um, so another another thing we can do here um, is if I go to my expander and then I add another modulation, um, add modulation in the key group. And this time I'm just going to do an attack decay. Okay. And I'm also going to do the same thing with the by quad and assign it to the exact same modulation, uh, which is this one right here. So now though, I'm going to click on this here on my attack decay and I'm going to assign it to a macro. Where are my macros? Here we go. I'll do ENV filter. And I'm going to make this one bipolar because the uh, parameter is bipolar, it goes up and down. So I don't, I, th I don't think I have to do that for both. Let's, uh, let's just test this theory. <laughs> Hang on a second. Uh, attack decay. Let's turn the decay right down and the attack right down. Cool. So that works. I'll uh, just check real quick. Pretty cool. Um, the only thing that I think we really need left here is to add macros to the attack decay. Add another macro. If we go across here to our macros, I'll just rename them. Attack. And decay. Sick. So now <clears throat> we have six knobs. Oh yeah.
Interesting. Doesn't seem to want to work in the negative values, which I find a bit strange. Hmm. Troubleshooting, my favorite. Um, let's just have a quick look at it. So we've got our decay, attack decay and just edit modulations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a weird one. I, I must say, I really want them to overhaul the macro stuff a little bit in UVI. Falcon, I think it's a little bit underbaked. Um, unless I'm using them wrong, I don't think I am. But like the amount of options you have, uh, pretty limited. Um, like I would really love to see uh, on these like more detailed options about rather than just a value knob, bipolar and continuous or on or off, I would like to see more granularity in what's actually happening because a lot of these parameters uh, don't always map well to this simple macro. Many of them work fine and you can get some, like the filter, obviously, like, you know, mapping like eight filters to one knob, just as an example, you can totally do that and it will sound cool. But when I get into this sort of uh, bipolar kind of um, modulation amount for the filter, I find it a little bit less than adequate. I don't know. I mean, it's working. It's just not working quite how I wanted it to work, uh, which is annoying. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm getting very sidetracked here. You see, that works. All right, so it does work. Anyway, got a cool sound here. I'm digging it. It's very, like, 90s <laughs> so i think um that's you know that's kind of the sound um but we can take it a little bit further we're not we're not done yet um one thing that i think is cool <clears throat> just in general in music production um is a bit of redux uh sample rate reduction <laughs> So let's add a macro here as well. And Okay, so here's like a great example of the problem with the macros. I would love to map both of these to the same macro, you know, and I can do that. However, I can't do them at different amounts. 
And it, in Ableton, with the macros in Ableton, you can do exactly what I'm wanting to. Although, again, in Ableton, I kind of wish it was slightly more expanded than it is even there. But here, like, if I want to have the same knob, well, let's just map it to Redux. <laughs> Like, what if I want the bitrate to stop there, but this one to go all the way down? You can't do that unless you do two macros, but like then you're controlling two separate controls. And at that point it sort of defeats the purpose in a way. That said though. That's a cool effect. Additionally, we could try some other things here. That does not want to do what I was sort of hoping. Um, what else have we got here? Granulizer. <laughs> So granulizer is, I mean, it's a granular effect. It's a little bit like clouds um, by mutable instruments, I guess. Um, and we could make it even more like clouds by adding a reverb after it. So why don't we do that? Um, let's do a spark verb. Let's pick this one. And let's macro both of these and let's just call it clouds. Why not? <clears throat> so now <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> I might adjust that reverb a bit. It's pretty insane. Let's adjust the size slightly. Let's increase the pre-delay. That is a cool sound. Um, in fact, I like it so much, I'm gonna save it. Uh, UVI, that's what I wanted. Uh, let's just call it Dirty Clouds for some reason. All right. So, sick sound. We're all having a great time with that one. Um, maybe 
And like, this is just a real maybe, but let's add it at reverb over the whole thing. But this time let's make it kind of, uh, small, like a chamber, uh, room. That's what I want. Maybe like metal room or something. Let's try that. I love that. Um, I love it. It's great. And I think that's going to do it. I think that's it. That's all we're going to add. We've got some cool macros here. Uh, I think obviously the, the other thing just real quick is you can, I can rearrange these. It's kind of fiddly and annoying. And right now they're sort of arranged fairly neatly. So I might just leave it. Um, but you can, map these to how you want. You can also, if you really want to get pretty like detailed with it is you can, uh, include in the patch, like an image to sort of make your own little uh, preset images. Um, who can be fucked doing that? Like I, I'm not going to do that. Uh, also I'm not a hundred percent sure how you do it. It's not hard. I know it is possible. Um, I've just never tried. I've never really had any reason to, it's just like, I guess if, maybe if I uh, <clears throat> end up putting together like a professional grade preset pack, then I'll look into doing that. For the time being though, this is how it's going to be. Speaking of preset packs though, I will be releasing all of these presets that I've made in these videos, plus extra ones for free on Gumroad as soon as I get them all together. Um, pretty busy right now. So I'm just trying to find the time to do that, but it will be done and you can download all of these. So look forward to that. I will announce it at some point. Uh, it won't be far off. Uh, anyway, that's what's that's today. That's today's video. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll make another one soon. I keep saying I'm going to do these for like pigments and maybe some other synths. I do feel like there's a lot more coverage of pigments on YouTube. So I don't know if it's as necessary, but pigments is an amazing synth. So maybe I will have a play around with it. I've got a few other Arturia synths that are worth playing with as well. Uh, so anyway, catch you later. Thank <laughs> you.